These are golden pheasant heads. They're um, these are low grade ones. They're tying grade. Um, you buy these in bulk, um, and the the ones that you get in shops, the the retail packs will be a bit nicer, will be a bit bigger, and the feathers will be less dis the crest feathers will be less distorted, but the feathers are the same. Um, there's two feathers on these heads. Uh, there's this at the back is these are tippet or collar. Um, by the way, you can buy both these separately. You can buy a collar separately and a, a crest separately. These are called crest or a uh, topping. These pure yellow feathers, gold feathers. Um, the we use both for tails, mainly for tails. Um, Ali Shrimp use these as um, sort of eyes, they're like an underwing. And in classic uh, salmon tying, you use these as a, an under, typically use these as an underwing, and the, the topping literally is a topping. It forms a tail and it, it goes over the, the wing, and they form a sort of boundary of the fly, the, the tail and the, and the topping crest. Um, preparing these is relatively simple. Uh, if I take one of these loose feathers, this is a, one I plucked earlier. Um, you can see down the side that there's a whole lot of, um, well, on this one there's actually some bent feathers, the uh, bent fibres. So what I would do is strip away those. Typically what I want to do is take away anything that doesn't have any markings on the tip. Um, so everything below there will go. Um, and then I take a, a slim bunch from there. If I angle it up from the, the, the feather slightly, you can see that these the, the fibres in the tip and the fibres in the bar, they're not exactly they're not exactly level, they're not exactly the same. Um, so by pulling out from the, the stem and angling the, the fibres, what I'm doing is trying to line this up a wee bit. I'd cut it there and then fold that so that um, it, the um, outer fibres are um, bright on both sides, are coloured on both sides. The back of these is dull, the, the outside, the, the, the top side is colourful. Um, Handle them as little as possible. You're trying to keep the the tip fibers lined up so that when they go in as a bunch, they they they're all level. Um, you know that that sort of that sort of idea so that it sticks out there. Um, I showed in the piece how to measure these against a hook. Um, typically, I like I like this sort of layout so that my thread would be just before that bar. That would be the the, the tail. Um, that length has to be the length of the shank, um, and I like to show the bar. Uh, some people don't. They they want to uh, um, either tie on the bar or actually no bar at all, showing just the the the, the black tips. Um, purely personal preference. Doesn't matter uh, which way you do it. It actually depends on the size of the head, what you can do. The other feather is the uh, crest. Now, if I take a, a nicely distorted crest feather off of here, um, that's, I, I hope you can see there that that's twisted in, in several directions. However, um, if I just take the, the tip, what, what I do to prepare this, if I'm tying this as, an, in as a, a trout tail, is I'll strip away the, the base fibres. They're too short, they're not marked, they're not coloured. I wet the feather with spit so I've got a, a, a much tighter streak and then I'm just going to work with that piece there which is straight, which is there. But what you can see is this twists away in a different direction but that's going to be under my dressing that's going to be what I see on the finished fly. And that's how I, I, I use these without preparing and without straightening them. Um, for when I'm getting fussy, 
I'll do this, which these have been plucked from the head, from our head. Um, they've been soaked, washed, and then dried carefully, uh, laid out on kitchen rolls so that they take their natural um, curve. They, they, they don't. These have been, uh, the bird has been killed, skinned, laid out in newsprint, and um, probably squashed. That's why they're all distorted in different shapes. These have been allowed to, to take their natural curve. The, um, and they're prepared in exactly the same way. If I'm using that for a trout fly, this would be a, a bit big for a trout fly, but if I'm using it for a trout fly, I'd use exactly the same piece. The difference being that um, this will, the, the, this section will line up under the, the body of the, the, the um, along the shank of the hook. And on a, say on some of the salmon flies and things, that, that looks nicer. Um, and it's toppings, if you're using it as a topping set across the top of a, a fly like that, then of course this is much more uh, useful. These can be curved. Um, typically what you do to tighten the curve, you would go in with your thumbnail and just pinch it a little bit and you'll, you'll, you should be able to see there there's a, a wee bit more uh, tighter curve there. Um, applied carefully that technique will let you fit these to a, a wing and the top fly tires use that sort of technique to, to do that. Traditionally there was a, a story that what you did was you took these and you, you stuck you wet them and stuck them to a, a whiskey glass and you let them dry and take the curve of the whiskey glass. I've tried it, didn't like it. Um, I needed for trout flies anyway, I needed a, a really, really, really tiny whiskey glass, which was um, impractical. Um, I found the, the washing and drying method uh, worked better. And finally, I showed this in the, the magazine. This is a dyed, it's, it's from the same um, batch of heads actually. Um, it's a dyed, a hot orange dyed head. Now this lets me, um, it gives me, you know, obviously crest and tippet. Um, it gives me much more intense colour. Um, if, if I'm tying a, a say I'm tying a, an alley shrimp or a cascade or that type of thing where there's a, um, a bunch of, um, of uh, tippet feathers put in his shrimp eyes as an underwing. Um, this gives me a much brighter hot spot. If I'm doing a, a trout fly with, um, and I want a more colourful tail, a richer colour in the tail, which I tend to like that better in clear water fisheries than in, in um, um, brackish or, or not brackish, um, in fisheries where there's a bit of tannin or a bit of peat in the water, I prefer the golden, the, the natural golden pheasant, this is uh, yellow. Um, if I'm fishing on, on uh, lowland waters where the water's clear, then I, I do rather like a bit of orange in the, in the tail. I suppose it's Daphne, I think. I don't know. Um, that, you can see how different that is and how much more colourful that is, both sides. The natural tail is actually pretty pale on the underside. Um, it's only colourful on the top side. This is uh, a much richer, darker orange um, and on both sides. They take dye well. Uh, you can dye them yellow. Some people do dye them fluorescent yellow and that colours up the back of course and that's, that, that is a, a nice um, addition to your... Um, if you're getting fussy about it, that's a nice um, addition to your techniques fluorescent yellow or just a rich yellow. So it's GP heads, golden pheasant heads.